Hi there friends, it's Jane from the Inky Owl Studio and I'm working on a new project and this one is going to be an accordion journal. It's going to be very easy, no sewing. Uh, I, although I'm going to put some sewing on it, you can all be glued. You can use glue for this whole thing. And it's, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a good beginner's journal. I, I think that um, it, it isn't that complicated. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, what you'll need for this project is strips of cloth and these are about one inch, a little over an inch wide. Let me see, probably um, an inch and a half. These are inch and a half wide and I just uh, tear strips out of some muslin. Uh, probably if you had, let's see how many inches is this? Yeah, if you bought like a fourth a yard of muslin, you'd have enough to make a lot of books. <laughs> uh, it very, it's inexpensive. You can use any color. You can use any fabric for this. Uh, an old sheet, an old pillowcase you want to uh, get rid of, you can tear it up and use that as well. So any kind of a cotton material, lightweight, would be perfect. So you can just tear several strips and uh, as you go along you can add more if you want. Um, I think I made six all together and we'll just see uh, how many of these we end up using in this project. And then you'll need some uh, food packaging, cardboard from food packaging. Uh, that's like the perfect weight. Now you can also use chipboard, but actually chipboard is probably a little heavier than what you need, but you can use chipboard. Uh, or you can do what I did on this uh, project. I used the back of a paper pad you know, a little cardboard that sometimes comes with it or a, a, a notebook or something of that nature. I'm using the back of one of those. And what's nice about these is there's no print on either side. So you don't have to be too concerned about your, uh, about the print here showing through on your paper. Anyway, so that's what I ended up using, but this is really, this would be perfectly fine. And you'll want to cut out two pieces that are five by seven inches. Now I am offering or giving you a free printout. So with this free digital, digital, I'm going to have two of these covers on one page. It's very lovely. I think it turned out quite nice. It's a nice uh, bouquet of shabby wallpaper, flowers, uh, roses on a background. Uh, you don't have to use this, of course. You can use your own paper, but I am supplying this so that if you want to make one um, a cover like my cover you would be able to do it. Uh, there's two on a page and there's a reason for that and you'll see as we go along. And so I um, I appreciate if you do download this and you have not subscribed please subscribe to my channel. That would really be a way to uh, uh, reward me for give, giving you this um, lovely uh, digital. And so I hope that you will so that you can, you can follow along as we construct this um, journal together. Um, so that's that, and I think that's just about all you need at this point. And of course, you're going to need your glue. I use glitter glue. Uh, well, this is not the bottle. Uh, <laughs> um, I use a, it's a wet glue, and it's it does really well with uh, fabric. But it's a quick drying glue, which is what I like. You can use for parts of it. You can use a, a glue stick, and I really like the Scotch Create glue stick. I feel it has some really good sticking pow power to it. It's a permanent uh, glue stick. So for parts, of, for parts of it, you'll be using the glue stick. And then, um, yeah, the, I think that's about all that I can think of right now that you're going to need. So there's no sewing involved, although I am going to put sewing as decoration in here, but it won't be anything that you need to do. You can do all by gluing. Uh, now the paper for the pages, uh, I would recommend that you get uh, that you use a paper that is like a double-sided paper, similar to what you have like in Tim Holtz. I, for for myself, I print on Espen um, presentation paper, and I use the 47 pound weight. It comes in two weights, and the heavier one is the 47 pound. And it's, it's like a Tim Holtz uh, paperweight, so it's got some body to it. I don't know that I would use the uh, thin paper for the pages. Now, it's not impossible. You can definitely do it. 
It just depends on how much you want to build uh, and put decorations and stuff like that on your pages. Uh, you can get away with it, uh, but I think it's much better to do like a heavier scrapbook paper than a lightweight one. All right. So to assemble the cover, I'm going to start with my cardboard and my uh, digital and the paper that I want to use for the backing. And I'm going to measure around the cardboard about a half inch or so uh, larger. And I'm going to use my glue stick here and <clears throat> just glue that uh, page onto there. You want to get a fair amount of glue and just glue it right there in the middle of your cover scrapbook paper. Then we're going to cut, we're going to miter the edges and we want to get close to that corner but not quite. We want to leave just a little hair of a distance there. You can cut it straight across, you can do it like a curve. Some people uh, do it in a curve motion there. Either way is acceptable. And now we're going to fold in the edges. I'm going to use my bone folder and just kind of rub up against that edge to get that fold started. Then I'm going to glue down the two opposing sides first. And once that do that, I'm taking the bone folder again and I'm going to just fold over the very, very corner of that cardboard there. And then finish up the edges. And by folding over those corners, you kind of uh, encourage the paper to uh, bend over it and not be so pointy there on the edge. So now we've wrapped the back part of the cover over and now we're going to put on the front. I've trimmed down this uh, digital just enough so there's a tiny, tiny border all the way around you may have to trim off a little bit, you may not. You can um, just test it out first. I am going to glue the very edge though with my glitter glue. I'm using these uh, little pointy small bottle which is just perfect for getting glue right where you want it and just the amount and I'll list down below where I've gotten those bottles. But you can use your favorite glue. Um, a quick drying glue is probably the best. And now we know the edges are secure. And this I already previously did the back cover. So we have the front and back cover. Now what I'm going to do is I print out, when you print out the digital, you'll get two of these same uh, images and what I'm going to do with the second image is I'm going to glue it on to uh, a food covering, a food uh, box on the back of it there and I'm going to glue it down and I'm going to fussy cut right around the rose, just kind of the center part of that uh, image and there it is completed. I'm taking some cheesecloth I'm going to distress the edges. Um, cheesecloth sometimes is not quite this uh, difficult to distress. Some are easier than others and you'll just have to play around with it. It's nice to be able to see the image underneath the cheesecloth so you can get an idea of just how much you want to have sticking out. And so once you're satisfied with that, we're going to first glue down the cheesecloth and get that down there secured. And then we're going to glue, uh, of course, the cardboard piece down. And um, again, it's nice to get to the very edge, the tippy edge if you can. But the most important part is actually the middle. And I should have put more glue on there. I 
would have felt better about it um, because when you press down the piece you, it's going to have to soak down in through past the cheesecloth. So a little bit more in the middle I think would have been a better route or even putting some fabric tack in the middle. But I just went around and made sure the edges were really super secured. And I think that was all fine and good. Now, um, you know, it wouldn't hurt to put this underneath some books overnight. Right, now that we have finished the cover, and of course this kind of idea you can incorporate in all kinds of things. Uh, I really love the dimension and the way it kind of stands out this way, and it gives you an opportunity to put something behind the main focus of your cover. Uh, I did film putting this first strip on, and somehow either I didn't press the record button or I lost it somehow, maybe deleted it. I don't know, but I can't find those instructions. I am going to do the next page with this so that you can actually see it done. Uh, it, and it just basically is gluing it, uh, gluing these two pages down on the strip and allowing at least a fourth of an inch. And I think I'm going to allow even more on the next pages because this space in here will allow you to put decorations and things uh, and put a little bit of bulk on these pages and it will, um, you know, it'll be easier for it to uh, come together as an accordion. But essentially you can see what's going to happen here is you're going to have, you know, your second page is going to go in here with the strip and your next page with the strip and your next page with the strip. So you can see that that would cause it to keep flopping on, back and forth on itself. And um, yeah, so that's, that's basically how these are going to go in. And again, we will do this together and have a little bit more uh, tips and tricks about putting that in. Now this particular page was another one I lost. You know, it's just really, it's incredible. I don't know what I did. I must have, uh, I just don't know what I did. Really, I don't. So let me just show you how I made this pocket very, very simple. I take a, uh... Take your decorative paper, and I'm just going to use a piece of typing paper here to demonstrate. But you want to fold over so that it's a little shorter and a little skinnier than your cover. Because you want it to be able to fit in and not go past that edge. And so that's what I did uh, with that fold. And we'll get that cut off. Now we have the fold of paper here and we're just going to secure the two sides. We're either going to sew or glue them, put in the thumb notch if that's what you would like. And that's basically how that page went together. Very easy. What I plan to do is I am going to, each, each session or each video, I'm going to decorate a page. And today we're going to decorate the inside of the cover and that first page. And I'll be doing each page a little differently with different kind of uh, things going on. So for this one, I'm doing a three stacked pocket. And I'm going to make each piece four and three quarters inch wide. And then one will be two inches tall. The other one will be three inches tall. And the other one will be four inches tall. And so you end up with these three uh, rectangles that are just each a little bit taller than the other. Very simple. And uh, once you've got that, and you don't have to put an inch between the two, you may want to put a half inch, three fourths of an inch. You can just experiment with that. Now to put the thumb notches in, I put the thumb notch in the first one and then I put it uh, behind the next one and put it behind the next one. And I draw a line on the back rather than on the front. I don't put one on the front because I don't want any of the pencil to show. I just put it there uh, on the back. I don't want to put the uh, pieces together the wrong way um, there. I want to make sure that they're all facing each other. So uh, and then I just go back in and I put in the punches. Now we're going to glue it together. 
and I plan to sew mine so I'm just tacking them in lightly but you will want to glue all three sides which I didn't do here so you'll want to do the bottom and the two sides for each layer otherwise your tag is um, probably going to slip through <laughs> and then you just build them up and then you're just going to do the three sides and glue them in and like I say I'm going to sew mine but that's how they'll go in now for the other part I'm going to put in a tuck spot so I've got some paper here and it's a little I like to make it a little bit more heavy and firm so I'm folding it over uh, probably about an inch and a half inch and a quarter and uh, cutting off a strip that's a doubled up so that there'll be a real strong place to put ephemera in and out and I'm going to cover up the cloth there I just thought I would like to do that I also intend to uh, sew this eventually but what I'm going to do here is uh, or what anybody will do is glue this all in together close it up shut and then you'll glue it in like a pocket you know the top the bottom and the two sides and then you'll have uh, a tuck spot give you an idea so we're going to stop right there and so next week we're going to work on another page or next week I'm sorry the next video we're going to work on another page and I'm going to show you how I put that one together and then we will be able to glue in one of these claws uh, and you'll see it in real time so thank you so much for viewing and please uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you can see the next parts of this fun little accordion journal that is going to be um, easy and really fun to do and oh before i leave i will have to say that the papers i'm using is from the pink monarch i'll put her link down below i'm using the sweet blossom digital kit uh really pretty i thought it went really well with uh, this here and uh, that's, that's those are most of the papers i'll be using in this particular um, project so we will talk to you real soon bye